Hey there, Shibi Dealers. How are you doing? I got asked this week a very difficult question to answer, which was, how do you know what to draw? Well, I'm a children's book illustrator, and so for every new book, I've got to draw a whole new bunch of characters, a whole new kind of scenes and things like that. And, and every book is entirely different, and there are a whole lot of new things to draw. Back in the old days, before the internet, that there really was one, I had a uh, much much more books than this and i had a great big collection of animal books bird books kind of you know world pictures of the world that kind of thing and whenever i went into an old bookshop or a, or a charity shop then i would uh, go and have a look at the books and every now and then i would get something maybe in a jumble sales and things like that i sort of pick up <laughs> books with pictures in as reference material and then along came google images which was absolutely <laughs> wonderful and i didn't need all those books anymore because i can go along to google images type in what i want and pow up come a load of pictures but the secret with google images is not to copy what comes up it's so tempting to choose one image and blow it up and maybe print it out and maybe trace it and uh, and copy that the thing is just to keep all those images up on the screen and try and work out that what, what, what my daughter used to call the nurse the, the the essence of the thing and so each drawing each little photograph just try and draw it quickly and try and work out what is it what is it that makes that thing it and a lot of that will come about through experience and where do you get that experience by drawing it's very like learning to play the piano. If you don't play an instrument that you think, oh, it would be really great to just sit down and do little -li on the guitar or blah, blah, wing on the piano. And you sit down and, and you just bung, <laughs> and you make an awful discordant noise. That's kind of what happens when you start drawing. Not quite the same because as a child, you've probably been given paper and pencil and you've just drawn. So you actually know how to hold a pencil and, a, and <laughs> to make marks on a piece of paper. And you probably did a, an awful lot of drawing at school. And that is all experience. And so when if you haven't drawn for a very long time and you pick up a pencil, you are picking up pretty much from when you were five or 10 or whatever it was when you stopped drawing. So you do have that amount of experience. But if you think, um, what a pianist has to do dum 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 all day long dum 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 and doing scale after scale after scale to the point where they can do it in their sleep and and i remember when i first learned to play guitar i did literally go to bed with my guitar and fall asleep e a d g b just playing those chords and my hand now i don't play the guitar i haven't really play the guitar I maybe pick it up sort of once oh, once every two months for five minutes but because I did all that practice I can pick it up and shing, go straight to those chords without thinking about it same as riding a bike the same thing goes for drawing now when you drew as a kid then you just made most scribble scribble yeah 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 but if you want it to kind of look a bit more realistic then you've got to do a bit of exercise you have to do those scales and those scales are kind of learning to draw boxes and squares and circles and things and how they relate how how circles become ellipses and things like that i've got a mass of videos in fact click up here and i will send you to my everyone can draw course and you can start right from the beginning and go through and kind of learn these simple things when you've done those exercises and i've been doing them for many 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 years and you know, a lot of the time you don't know you're doing those exercises because you think i'll just draw a box or i'll just draw a building and a building is a box and so you're thinking all the time how does this box uh, work and it's it's a 3d thing and once you've got it in your head you, you you can rotate it in your imagination and draw it how you want it if you haven't done the practice then you have to sit down and work it out from scratch so when you go to google images or even better still if you can go and actually sit down in front of the object that you want to draw then then you can actually walk all the way around it and draw it from every angle you know it, sometimes it's not easy to get to draw a bengal tiger or get to the zoo or whatever so you will go to uh, google images find images for a bengal tiger and i kind of you need to be able to do this Thing again um, at, and find angles and draw those angles don't draw a character 
draw the thing, draw the animal, draw the box, draw whatever it is, draw the thing and find out what the essence of it is. And then once you're comfortable drawing that and being able to start moving away from the photographs, sort of switch Google off and say, right, let me draw it without that. Let me refer to my drawings. And you start moving away from those photographs and you start creating this drawing of your own. And as you start drawing, you can start turning into a character. <laughs> Let me show you something I was doing this weekend. Um, now, <laughs> it wasn't this, in fact, but this is another character. Uh, I needed to draw a little dog. It needed to be a scampy little dog, uh, a, a puppyish kind of dog. And I, this isn't right. I'm running around in the park. So again, I went to Google. And I drew some things and it just didn't quite feel right. And I, I kind of knew I wanted this sort of streak, this white streak and this slightly manic kind of look. And I wanted this kind of naughty look too, feeling very naughty. And I think as I was drawing, suddenly I thought, I. I, I like where it's going, but I don't like this drawn thing. I'm going to just do that in the paint. And suddenly it was just much more subtle and, and the character appeared. And this is pretty much, I did a whole book with this character. And there is much more simple. <laughs> Some other characters from the book. But this is what I was doing on Saturday. In fact, click up here and you can see it's an hour long session I did with the Weektown Book Festival uh with the author vivian french and storyteller renita boyle and we we'd already kind of had a little meeting and decided the story where it was going to go and we thought it would really not be nice to have a little bunny so <laughs> so i started looking at rabbits baby rabbits and just started drawing sketches and you know there are many famous children's book characters that are rabbits already <laughs> so it has to look slightly different and i just yeah wasn't happy and it wants to be a little baby rabbit and and I think I drew this one here and I thought this is actually kind of near the essence but it it's got that kind of uh, thumper look about it from Bambi if you've ever seen that the Disney Bambi so I kind of wasn't quite happy so it's kind of just drawing you just have to draw a lot and kind of trying to work your way through it that's all you can do is just to draw and to try different things you know smaller bodies and this is kind of going here now where it's kind of becoming more of a toy really um, to get regular drawing hints tips and inspiration click subscribe ring the bell and select all notifications so on the actual show within the hour children were on the chat suggesting various ideas and i was just drawing all the way through and um, drawing very 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 quickly but at the, but by doing these very very quick sketches i don't think i'm getting it right i don't think i'm getting to where <laughs> i want it to be but i'm getting to know what i don't want uh, and I think here, I think he's too big, too old. And even here, I think he's too old. Um, and I think I want him to be a much younger uh, rabbit for the story. And and this was kind of one I did <laughs> while, while we were doing, I think while the story was being told. So I had a bit more time to do that one. And this was, uh, it was like a Jack and the Beanstalk story. And when he opened up the flowers inside, there is a little book. And that actually comes away and it flaps and things like that. What do I know about this? I know that, you know, I'm going to want a, a circle for a head. And now I'm going to want these kind of shapes for the ears. And these are all shapes that I've practiced and practiced. And I know that this is a kind of eye that I do. And I know that this is a kind of eye that I do for younger characters. Uh, but I've got to be careful not to do that because suddenly it becomes Miffy, uh, which is a well-known uh, character, and I don't want to do that. So, uh, and I'm, I'm also, I think I'm going to want to have uh, a mouth as well, which Miffy doesn't really have. And, and I'm kind of thinking, I like this idea of him having a little coat on, which brings us back to Peter Rabbit. <laughs> if you don't know Peter Rabbit, then click up here and I'll read it to you again let's think about that and, and and I want him to be quite young so I have drawn thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of faces and expressions in my time and so that's how I know what to do um, and so and I'm thinking he's a hoppity skippity kind of 
lolly lolly la kind of thing. You see those eyebrows now make him look too old. And so I'm thinking he's going hoppity skippity. This is something that we want. And I'm kind of thinking he could just be in a onesie kind of thing, can't he? Um, and and there's so many kind of ways this can go. <laughs> uh, so if I do that again. And then, is, you know, how do you make him look young? So I think by having a wider face, the eyes much further apart. And I'm now just thinking about a different kind of slightly different bunny shape for the ears. I think that actually makes him look more bunnyish, doesn't it? And and I want him to have these little paws, and then it's kind of little baby kind of <laughs> little baby grow onesie thing. And I think that's that's starting to look sort of quite fun now. Having done this, we have been talking about maybe doing a book, but maybe we won't. So in my mind, I'm thinking I really don't want to spend a huge amount of time on this until he's going to fall in this hole. Wait a minute. Oh, we don't want that to happen, do we? Uh, have a bit of shadow there as well, something like that. How did I know to do that? Because I have drawn um, ellipses and I've studied ellipses and I know that that is what a hole will look like and uh, and you know and if, if you don't know that then you're gonna have to go off and find some reference material <laughs> so the hard part of this is that you need to do a lot of drawing and there are two kind of types of drawing that you can do there's the fun drawing where you're just relaxing and there's the kind of the hobby drawings just for fun but if you sort of want to get good and you want to create characters and things like that <laughs> like musicians like footballers like dancers like everybody you need to do the exercises and you know the exercises are just little things that you can just do again and again and again get a sketchbook and just fill it full of these little exercises shading exercises how to draw circles you know, just drawing circles drawing boxes these are the essential shapes that you really need to get inside your head actually let me go back think about what's actually going on here is there is a circle but it's actually a sphere and click up here and you can see a video of you know, how I do this with characters so so that you can have you know, this character coming from any angle that you like um, and, and so it's sort of understanding how a sphere works uh, and then this body is basically it's a box <laughs> and there are these little tubes sticking out on each side and there's a little tubes sticking out at the bottom tubes with little sort of hemisphere things down there and and it's kind of knowing <laughs> it's kind of knowing how to twist and turn those shapes but don't let that put you off do a little bit of practice do a little bit of fun a little bit of practice a little bit of fun but when you're doing the practice use use your intelligence and really think about what you're doing and and and, and kind of criticize yourself what you're doing don't criticize yourself badly criticize yourself positively when you finished it you go oh that bit's good oh that's good i'll remember to do that and that bit there i'll get it right next time and next time you work on that little bit and keep oh, fly keep working on that little bit until you get it right so you know when when you find a bit that's easy that's all right that's easy because because you've practiced and you've kind of built up that memory and you built up that muscle memory in your hand that's when you have to do the hard work and you have to go work on the bits you're not quite getting right and you just have to keep building it up and building it up but you can do it Thanks for watching. And if you like what I do here on YouTube, you can click up here and support me on Patreon and get sort of help sheets and stuff like that too. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. And in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.